Welcome to FUD TV, Sandeep from Matic. How are you doing, Sandeep? Hey, Elliot. Uh, I'm good. I'm doing very good. And uh, thanks for inviting me here. And thanks uh, for giving the opportunity to present in front of your community. Yeah, well, I'm sure the audience will be excited to hear from you. Why don't you tell them a little bit about you? Uh, I guess if they're not familiar with Matic, I don't know if you guys have been living under a rock if you're not familiar with Matic, but definitely try to introduce yourself and your project for people who don't know you or the project, and then we'll get into the juicy stuff about what Matic's up to. Yeah. So um, I'm Sandeep. Uh, my, uh, you know, I'm one of the co-founders and COO at Matic Network. Uh, by background, I am uh, also a blockchain developer, but in but at Matic, my role is more uh, towards anything that is not related to tech. So, you know, my other two co-founders, uh, you know, extremely intelligent and, uh, you know, blo uh, senior blockchain uh, contributors in the ecosystem, they, Jayanti and Anurag, they focus uh, on the product and the technology side. I focus on all the other sides. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's about me. And, uh, you know, in terms of Matic, Matic is... Uh, is a layer two scaling platform uh, currently built built on top of Ethereum. Although it's built in a way where it can support multiple uh, layer one blockchains, but we believe that Ethereum is the by far the number one blockchain. And you know we are building our you know first mainnet go is is, is built on Ethereum. And uh, what it aims as is, is it's it aims as at providing you know uh, on top of Ethereum a layer so that you can do transactions. Uh, you know, tens of times faster. So block times on Matic sidechain. That means the 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 response time on Matic, or confirmation time on Matic is like one one point two seconds. Uh, building applications on top of such platform can give you, uh, you know, very good response times and helps you build a user experience which is as good as your uh, normal applications like the currently Web two applications. And also in terms of the transaction fees, which is very big, very big problems on layer ones. Uh, on Ethereum, it's a very big problem it's because it's the most adopted uh, blockchain. But for other layer ones also, uh, uh, you know, even if whoever are there who are even slightly adopted, even they are facing, uh, you know, scalability and in terms of the transaction fees kind of issues. So on, on uh, so Matic enables generally, you know, somewhere around one hundredth of the transaction fees that you would incur on Ethereum. So Imagine you your application being on Ethereum, but it can utilize the benefits of Layer Two, uh, wherein it can have you know one hundred the cost of the transactions, and you know the transaction times are like one second. So that is the kind of offering that we provide. But along that, we it also provides you the decentralization, you know, which is which is at a very very good level. So all the Layer two and some other uh, you know scalability approaches they compromise a lot on decentralization and security. Whereas you know from the from the get go of Matic like day zero of Matic we have focused on providing this scalability platform, keeping the networks decentralization to a certain amount like to a certain uh, you know high degree of decentralization. So you know this network is very heavily anchored with Ethereum. All the transactions that are happening on the side chain are kind of you can, in a simple terms, you can think of them as being batched and being pushed into Ethereum. And using those, you can reference what is happening on the side chain and actually the security benefits can be derived on Ethereum main chain. So you can go to Ethereum main chain and using that badged fingerprint that gets checkpointed every 15 minutes, you can actually uh, verify transactions of the side chain on main chain. And if they don't verify, if, are, if they are not following the rules, security rules or consensus rules on the side chain, you can actually... Uh, you know, kind of uh, slash the validators on the main chain. So it's like a pay, pure layer two. It's not like a you know in the air kind of layer two. It's a it's a very heavily anchored layer two on top of Ethereum. So so uh, hold on, I wanna I wanna break this up a little bit. Uh, first of all, if people aren't familiar, obviously Ethereum's pretty much fended off and and battled back against all of the Ethereum killers over the last few years. Tron, EOS, uh, Cardano, so far nobody has been able to dethrone Ethereum as far as being the, you know, I guess primary target for blockchain developers uh, across a wide var uh, variety of spectrums, whether that's DeFi, gaming, uh, NFTs, and beyond. What do you think makes, and, and there's also multiple Ethereum scaling solutions. So what do you think makes your Ethereum scaling solution the winner? And what do you think makes Ethereum the winner for as far as a platform for you to be building on? 
so first i'll directly go to the other ethereum scaling solutions right so you know and you're very right general sentiment is that there are a lot of ethereum scaling solutions but if i ask you give me one you know even one name which is uh, available in production and is there like i'm sure that you won't be able to name like even a single like there were many like you know there were raiden there were omise go right there were projects like proof of authority and all that all these projects are you know almost kind of dead or nobody really uses them right and if you go by the number of applications who are using matic even in the beta mainnet they far outpace any other ethereum layer 2 you know plat platform so as if i talk about ethereum layer 2 kind of scaling approaches matic is by far the most by far not even like i'm not saying the most i'm saying by far the most uh, you know adopted platform now coming to the first part that what makes ethereum the most uh, killer application and all that is that you know one is that uh, i feel that the ethereum's design is very elegant in terms of a blockchain you know uh, platform developer there have been some other like tezos is a, is a is a good competitor i would say you know only one of the only respectable competitor to ethereum in that sense but their uh, programming language and uh, you know all that stuff is very very difficult to do and it's very hard for like if i mean uh, you know if you are developing a game or a blockchain based application and I, I tell you that oh you can scale your application right which is again as you know we were discussing backstage like before starting the video that you know people don't really care about the re the blockchain or decentralization they want to have their first priority is a good app experience plus if there is decentralization all that they are happy about it right so if somebody tells you that oh there is this blockchain coming up uh, you can scale your application but it will take you 6 months to you know to put it put your hardcore work into it understand the entire blockchain and then develop something and then do something it's very very difficult so uh, you know first is the elegant and simplistic design then is the community and the developer community part of it that right? you know when you are developing and you are also a developer right so when you are developing something you know every 15 minutes you encounter something that oh this is not working what do you do you go to google and search you know what what is happening so any platform can provide their own documentation which is good enough and solid and all that but the most kind of inputs that we get as developers we get it from those stack overflow groups and all that right i mean you find all those you know somebody has encountered the same problem and you know tens of people have put their views and all that that is a very very organic thing that happens right so with ethereum ethereum has a huge huge advantage on that even if you bring somebody in who's who has a superior blockchain and all that is going to take them a lot of time before they you know reach that part well and even even part, on even on tron as we've been building uh, and we thought you know the solidity uh the shared solidity language would would solve a lot of problems but there's been a lot of problems that don't have those threads available so we don't have that same developer community for the project as we've been developing it and you know exactly. when we look towards ethereum you see a lot more uh, community driven development work and and that guys if you don't know uh what sandeep is saying is is very pertinent because as a developer you encounter random errors random uh compile errors or things that are just seem to be very basic stuff that can be you know the misplacement of one comma and yeah. you end up with these errors and so you you need that community to help identify solve and move forward or else you end up just stuck in cycles and so uh one yeah. single comma can can make you stuck for hours right you know can waste mm -hmm. your productive time if there is some particular bug that you are not able to find out or some extra bracket that you have used or something like that right so that's just one thing but the last and the most important thing that you know and many people might find it like little off is that ethereum actually made a lot of developers a lot of money initially up front right that mm -hmm. ico boom right mm -hmm. and that helped like that ico boom for that 6 months or 12 months where everything was raising money on ethereum and then at one point it looked like oh ethereum will be bigger than bitcoin itself right that time duration pulled in all the smart brains like whoever were like 90% of the smart brains who got attracted towards this field they got attracted towards ethereum and that ico boom is something that is ill you know unrepeatable and then you know somebody it's very hard to repeat something like that that kind of revolution some other blockchain would need so that everybody joins in like bitcoin had that early on first mover advantage with ethereum also it's the same thing so i think that is also the third point that i feel so 
coming back to the second point, why Ethereum is so successful and, and all that stuff. So that's why one of our core business strategy has been that we preserve, you know, 99%, I would say 100%, but there is deposits and withdrawals, which is like when you use a layer two, like magic, you have to deposit it into the layer two and then withdraw into the layer one. That will count as 0.5% or 1% of the developer experience. I would say 0.5%, right? But 99%, 99.5%, we preserved the exact, you know, token economics, the, uh, you know, the ether versus the gas fees and all that. We preserved that developer experience automatic. So, you know, in our developer presentation, the first opening slide is, if you are an Ethereum developer, you are already a Matic developer, right? Mm -hmm. So that is also giving us a lot of, you know, so, uh, right now the lift. So, so I want to I wanna take this conversation into a sphere that I think the audience is interested in, which is, why are you going to win, right? Why is Matic going to win when, like you said, so many of these projects are dead projects? The so-called revolutionary second layers, the plasmas, the omise goes, uh, the looms, the I mean, engine as well in a certain way, but they're not really dead. They're doing, they're doing, uh, still doing okay. What do you think makes Matic different than these other projects? And obviously, community is big, but we've seen big communities. So, what is going to be the X factor that allows Matic to win where others have have lost? Yeah. So, I would say that uh, you know two main things. One is the first priority, and and in, I'm, I'll say in the order of priority, the first priority is is mass adoption, right? Like we build the build the platform with the focus of having the mass adoption. So, our Whatever we build, whatever decisions we take when we are building our core blockchain platform, we always discuss within internally that is this a good user experience. If it is not, then we we'll, then that will keep remaining in our sprint plan or backlog plans as one key user issue, right? The second part is, and many people don't realize that, and many people don't talk about it. The user experience everybody talks. The second most important part people don't realize is the developer experience. And that is one of our core focus areas. That is why we, so, uh, you know, our CEO, Jayanti, he is one of the core implement, he was one of the core implementers, implementators in the Plasma group. In fact, the third iteration of Plasma, the Plasma MVP, he was the first team, he was, he led the first team and or led, like he individually developed 99% or 95% of that code. He single-handedly developed that entire Plasma MVP implementation. And, you know, you can actually find Many people, again, don't know this stuff about Matic, but you can actually go to YouTube and search for Plasma Call 5 or Call 5, and you'll find, uh, you know, Asiyo Jayanti and Vitalik and Joseph Poon and all that in the same call and all that. So we were there, but that's exactly why we separated from the Omise Go. Like Plasma Group was essentially Omise Go, right? So we separated from that because we said that, you know, this kind of developer experience and user experience, nobody is going to use. And from the get-go, at that point, many people said that, oh, no, this is building something like this is not possible and all that. And now most of these people are doing the same or following the same approach, kind of the EVM on the side chain kind of approach. So, uh, you know, from the day zero, when we focused on the developer experience and this part, uh, the user experience part, I think that sets us. These things seems like very simple, things, but honestly, when you are developing that blockchain and, you know, I also go into our technical calls and all that, it is very easy to go for something very idealistic and, you know, white papery or, you know, kind of a professor, like, you know, we know we have a lot of professor coins, right? And VC coins, uh, Vitalik also jokes about. So, you know, it's very it's easy to become like a professor coin and then, you know, create something, uh, you know, which is, which, which absolutely is unusable. I mean, recently, I don't want to name the project, but there was some, some huge privacy enabled coins and coin that was, you know, launched and all that. But, what it had is that if you, in order to in order for you to receive the coin, you also need to be online, right? So if I and you are doing a transfer, you need to be online. That's like you know very old kind of electronic stuff, right? So that's not gonna work. But technically, idealistically, research-wise, that's a very beautiful kind of secured kind of stuff, right? So focus on these things, keeping a constant eye on these things is very important. And you can actually think about it. So we run it. We also run it like a startup. We don't run it like a you know pure play foundational kind of stuff or only a research kind of stuff or technology platform like i was telling you we also are focused on distribution we only won't don't want to provide our teams uh, a, a development platform we want to provide them a distribution platform also so you know 
if you see that example from amazon it's very easy everybody says that oh good delivery and customer experience is the big thing but you can already see you know looking at how many e-commerce companies you have at at amazon scale and realize that how difficult it is to do it in practice and i think uh, that is what is winning a lot of uh, you know developer support and that's why we are already you know becoming or growing so fast in yeah, terms of what that as as a developer i certainly you know distribution is king and so you know that's we we talked briefly about the app store and you know it wasn't until the iPhone reached a saturation level that the apps started really exploding to that level. But once the distribution was there, all of a sudden the developer, uh, you know, the developer push could then match because you can have the quality of product really flourish. Uh, and I think the same thing will happen in the future for cryptocurrencies and blockchains. But like you said, we're, we're missing uh, UX, we're missing developer user experience, we're missing uh, a variety of the qualities of experience that we've come to rely on in the centralized world. I'm a big believer that you're never going to change the user or the user never goes back in time. So once we've had this new standard that we're all used to on the iPhone, you know, the Uber experience, right? Once we've had that, we cannot go backwards. So everything that comes out in blockchain universe needs to be at that level, if not better. I believe it should be better in various ways. But so what you're saying is, is incredibly important. Now it's been a lot of, it's, I, you know, Elliot, I mean, that's really beautifully articulated from, from your side. And I would say that I would like to borrow your lines that user <laughs> doesn't go back in time. And, you know, I would, I'm going to quote it and I'll name you wherever I quote this, this statement, right? So, this Thank you, Sandeep. I appreciate that. And that's just how it is, right? And, and we, we see that we're, we're constantly pushing forward. And because if, if you could go backward, we all just create the new Amazon, right? We all just go make Amazon and Facebook, right? We, we just go back there and do that. But really, uh, in this journey forwards, uh, we need all of these problems solved, right? It's, it's not a question of want, it's, it's a need. My question is, now we've seen you guys grow, we've seen uh, Coinbase loves you, Binance loves you. These are not easy people to please. And from the you know, sort of layperson's perspective, it seems sometimes that you are very similar to other projects. What made Matic unique in the way that Coinbase wanted to fund you and back you, Binance wanted to fund you and back you? What made you stand out to these players? And you know, do you think that that X factor is going to continue you know, what our audience would like to know is, is Matic going to be a big winner in the scaling solution race? Yeah, and, you know, this is a very interesting, interesting question because, you know, if you see it that way, like the things I'm talking about, they will, they are very generic kind of thing. You'll say that, oh, you know, everybody can say that, you know, that, oh, we have good user experience, we have good developer experience. It's mm -hmm. very easy to claim those things. And yep. that's why, you know, Instead of like some professor coin, you know, you can take some very big, uh, you know, patent or, uh, you know, some white paper, which is critically acclaimed and, you know, get uh, Binance or uh, these people to back you. Right. So for us, it was not like that. And, for, and, and you know, for us to, to convert these, these uh, or, or, you know, convince these people like the people you are saying, it took us a lot of time. Like Binance did a, uh, uh, an evaluation of us for eight months, like before we were selected for Launchpad, a general Silicon Valley team will get selected in one or two months if they are good. We were evaluated for eight months, right? I mean, we had like, with Binance, we had a questionnaire, like to and fro questionnaire document, which which ended up becoming 100 page long. And it's actually hardcore text, right? You know, their question that, what is your business strategy? What is this? What is that? And during that eight months, all I can say, and if you ask what what will make you you know which, which, what will make you become successful, I would say if you see our growth curve right from the 2017 end we started in the last three years, it's a constant growth curve, right? In whatever field, if you want to see, it. and that's what I feel that you know having these core fundamentals, like I said, like Amazon's customer customer experience. I'm saying user experience and developer experience and providing the distribution platform, these core, you know, things in hand, and then the consistent hard work, you know, across the multiple months has got us that kind of credibility that, you know, developers and everyone sees that these guys are, you know, these guys are, you know, here to, and when we are, we are working with them hand in glove with the developers, 
for various kind of their help. We have a technical support team. We provide technical support, marketing support, business support. We go on calls with them. Even I go and then you know we do we do brainstorming <coughs> and all that stuff with the with the games and developers that how they can really take it take it out. That kind of partnership and you know I I actually say that if you talk to any of our partners right and ask them the experience of working with Matic, they will tell you that what's the reason of our success, right? You will realize that, okay, this might be something that, you know, take you guys in the next step. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I appreciate you sharing that. And, you know, for me, it's just, like you say, professor coins, right? There's so many coins out there that have something, you know, academic about them or, you know, like the wrong Chen thing with the Lastos. And it's just sort of like... Uh, Internally, my partner and I, we don't believe in academic coins, not because we don't believe that these professors know what they're talking about. We're sure they do. But professors don't have the urgency. They don't have the entrepreneur's mindset of building things with the ruthless dedication to the user experience and, and to the market, right? Uh, right? Professors like to draw on whiteboards and they like to put out ideas and make them perfect and beautiful, but they're not ready for when those ideas interact with reality. Um, yeah. So I think what you're saying is really important. Uh, what do you? And what's your? What, I also made this, you you actually I I also made the statement that I, we run it like a startup. We run yeah. it like a as you were also mentioning constantly iterative startup which tries to be as lean as possible, as you know nimble as possible, and keeps moving fast. We deliberately till now did not go into a foundation mode till now, right? Because foundation mm -hmm. adds that kind of you know barriers on top of you which makes it very, very difficult for a project uh, to, and company to be agile. So once, mm -hmm. only once we reach a particular point of mainnet and all that, when we completely want to decentralize it and all that, we go into, a, into that foundation or DAO kind of mode. What, what, do you, so that's also one. what do you have to say to people who might be thinking, this is just like some other projects I've heard of. I've heard of other projects yeah. that say they have the best UI, the best experience. Um, how do I know that Maddox not just going to die off? Uh, so I, to that, my only only answer would be that uh, I will talk to you uh, in uh, let's say October or Dece December 2020. Let's talk in December 2020 and let's see okay. what you have to say. <laughs> All right. So you know, obviously, the biggest X factor here is DApps. Uh, we want to see end user products, right? We, you know, you can think of blockchain like plumbing or like electrical grid or something like that. It's infrastructure, right? And it's yeah. meant to host products and services, right? And so, you know, what kind of products and services can we see coming to Matic? What are you guys focusing on? And what do you think is going to be the big winner for you guys? Yeah. So I think, you know, we have like few categories of such games. So first and biggest is the gaming. And you know already that, you know, by and large, like almost all the top, uh, you know, like for example, take example of VR, VR platform, right? Decentraland is working with Matic. Somnium Space is working with Matic. Sandbox, which is like frequent, very mm -hmm. fast uh, emerging, right? They are working with Matic. Uh, you have other ones coming up like World Oppo, all, all in all, you know, developing or developing and working on Matic. Now, apart from that, on the for the normal games, almost all the top games, we have some sort of partnerships with XC Infinity, which are the you know top leading games. You know, we try to do hackathons and all that stuff with them. They have a huge community and but they are deployed on Loom for now. But yeah, I mean, they have a huge community and we want to work, you know, somehow with them. Neon District and Blockade Games, like the, again, the top games, we have very close partnership with them. They are working on, you know, the platform and kind of stuff. Their platform will have Matic as natively integrated and everything. So almost all the top games in the space, almost all tap, top dApps in the space are somehow or the other either integrating with Matic or they are, you know, uh, exploring Matic in various sense. Like many top dApps in the space, you know, you won't know, but they would be exploring Matic and they're in the current exploration phase. Many teams have moved from other platforms to Matic. So that's one part. Then payments is, again, one important part that, uh, you know, uh, people are exploring. So this year, uh, the consensus uh, tachyon program, right? Out of, the, out of the seven teams in consensus tachyon program, uh, three of them were actually in somehow uh, integrating with Matic or, you know, have previously built their prototypes on Matic. So that kind of stuff. So payments is the second category after gaming. I would say payments is one important thing. Uh, then we have like generic dApps, like, you know, uh, what I want to call it as real world use cases. Like, for example, we have 
uh, an app called uh, Spring Roll, which is actually building a LinkedIn kind of platform on blockchain. And the team, I love the Spring Roll team's entrepreneurship. So they know that no revenue is coming out in this space. So they quickly transformed this blockchain-based thing into an employee verification service uh, for the enterprises. And they are making revenues from there, right? And similarly, you have a team in China, uh, which is building, for example, uh, you know, uh, 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 so they are actually an ISP over there, internet service provider. And they have around 600,000 households where their routers are installed. And they want to create an ad-based network so that these router owners, like, you know, the people who have deployed those routers in their homes and, come, you know, uh, in the commercial spaces, they can give free internet and use their free bandwidth and make some money from there. So the, any end user can be near some such router, log on to it, and then, you know, sign up and, you know, he just sees an ad and then he gets, like, let's say 10 minutes of free connectivity or whatever, right? So that kind of stuff they are building. So these are all real world use cases where blockchain actually makes sense, right? So, uh, the, you know, these, these are like the largest uh, like uh, category, I would say. There are multiple such platforms. Um, then uh, there, were, there was one more category I was remembering. Uh, 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 yeah, like for example, these uh, NFT kind of ticketing solutions and all that. So we had a team from Cuba, it's called Zawadi. They were, uh, you know, LabitConf was the biggest, uh, you know, Latin American crypto conference. So they became the official partners for the, uh, you know, ticketing of LabitConf. They are integrating very closely with the meetup.com, I think. Oh, Eventbrite, sorry, Eventbrite. And Eventbrite, they are looking to have a direct plugin into Eventbrite. Within any event you create, you can add that plugin and that your event will, will become like an NFT. So things like that. So there are a large number of applications I can talk, you know, for multiple uh, hours on that. Uh, well, that's awesome to know. I mean, I think the only other thing to talk about right now is, you know, obviously Matic had uh, an amazing run, the number one uh, IEO on Binance. Uh, I believe the best performing IEO on Binance, probably one of the best performing IEOs uh, in the market, if not, if not the best. Yeah, probably, probably the best. I haven't actually done the math. What happened a it couple months ago? In terms of volume and in terms of the, the you know, the multifold from the IEO, like both in terms of all-time high and in terms of our current, uh, this thing also, even in these bad markets, we are like 6x, uh, 5 to 6x of our uh, IEO price. And with the volumes, with the, no, the, no, the project has. So what happened a couple months ago? I know a lot of people have speculated that, there was a team dump or something. Obviously, if you guys weren't aware, there was a, there was one day where in a matter of minutes, Matic crashed something like 70% uh, or 40%. What's, what's the, what was the number? It was, it was brutal. Yeah. It was brutal. The, uh, the, 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 the bottom most was around 70% of the, the current market price. And, you know, before that also, like in the last three weeks when the whole market was kind of in a beer mode and everything was going down, Matic went up like 3x in that time suspicious right? and, and, yeah and then you know went down like this thing so uh, you know we also suspect because the kind of volumes on matic we were the number one volume for a long long time like we had more volume than ethereum itself right sure. uh, on which is very you know uh, ludicrous to, to to think about it right so uh, so that was the like there was a lot of you know developer activity because a few teams have started moving from let's say battle racers at that time moved from loom network to matic so, and they were like staking was, you know, expected to come and all that stuff so it started running up. And then, you know, suddenly we saw that, okay, it's going really, really up for some time. We realized that, oh, because we are doing such a, you know, this thing, it's a natural one, but once beyond, like it, it crossed the all time high, it kept going on. And, you know, from there, you know, we also started becoming like, you know, what exactly is happening? Like, you know, uh, do, we, do you guys have a trading desk? Do you guys have internal market makers? We we have a liquid this thing liquidity provider team, and which is which sits out of US only. Uh, you know uh, it's fully compliant and all that. So they provide the liquidity provisioning, not the like the crypto market making kind of stuff, right? So you have this, and I think that's what these uh, you know. Anyways, we don't have that kind of money. Like you know, multiple million dollars. We did not raise like twenty million. We raised only five point six million dollars. And what happens is that you know these whales and all all these people behind it, they also realize that we might not have that market making power to you know adjust prices and we have all our tokens locked in the market in the smart contract like generally projects 
no tokens are locked when you see a project says that their tokens are unlocking this 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 on actually on that address no token is locked right because they it's just a social contract that they declare that oh we will not move but mm-hmm. if you go by matics this thing we have all the contracts on the tokens locked in a smart contract like vesting smart contract where all the tokens are locked so uh, you know in that time what happens is that what happened is that our tokens are locked and we don't have too much of like you know muscle power in the markets i think many of these whales and all that and the other part was at that small level like you know in terms of the market cap we hardly had like you know 30 40 mil- 50 million 60 million market cap within that market cap range we were i think we were the only project which has margin enabled 5x margin enabled so when it was enabled on binance then it went on bitmax and then you know slowly ftx also so there was also a vote where uh, you know all some other projects were voted and matic you know has a tendency to win all the votes in, on the twitter so ftx uh, you know created a vote and then we won the vote and we got free listing on ftx right and now you know you if you go to ftx there were some instruments created like matic moon matic but i don't know matic dump or matic beer something like that they you know these things and many people have told me that when that particular dump came in there was a large number of accumulation of those kind of you know shorts or or you know beer tokens in the in the in the market so so, so some what, some whales manipulated the market on you so, no so it's very evident that somebody you know manipulated because the the net uh, market supply was around 25% of tokens out of which i think 15 16% of tokens will be on binance and then within those 10 15 minutes the net volume traded was around uh, 42% tokens like mm-hmm. you know you don't even have those many tokens how can they, they trade so what happened is that what people uh, you know what what our analysis is after multiple talking to multiple people is that these people like these whales they were able to borrow 5x at a huge like at a huge number in the huge quantity from binance and they accumulated all these short positions now they have huge amount of borrowed you know margin tokens plus you know they have taken short position now they started dumping on the spot with which their margin calls like shorts become profitable and once they start they actually started dumping and matic imagine like also key, note that part that in the last 3 weeks matic has tripled in the price so anyways there are general market uh, you know uh, traders which are shorting but there are also a lot of retail traders who actually there is a upward capitulation like they are actually thinking that oh it's not going to stop now because it's been growing up and up and up for last 3 months 3 weeks so it 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 will keep going to maybe 1000 satoshi right so many start many people started longing at those dangerous levels like retail people and then you know when they knew that okay they have enough amount of longs available so that when they short their short can be profitable they shorted on the spot market and that actually resulted into a cascade effect and within like if you go to binance on those days i think it's it's like in the total span of like 5 to 10 minutes that whole 70% dump came in like many people think even say that oh you know uh, in the initial like the people who don't understand that oh team dumped it all that like think about it like you know this price was at that high level that like three like 4x level from the base price and from io it was like uh, around uh, it was around 18 18x right why would we, why would if we were a team why would we attract the attention like even if we wanted to sell attention of the entire globe uh, crypto market and dump in one single minute like who who would be so stupid to do that so there's yeah. absolutely no way anybody who is in the interest it, of the project can do it yeah it doesn't make sense for sure uh and you know the manipulation argument makes sense i guess what people would want to know is 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 it safe is it safe to get into matic because uh, a lot of people after an interview like this hearing exciting things about the project they might think well maybe i should be holding some matic myself uh but a, a drop like that makes you feel like hey well i don't know if i can trust it yeah 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 so actually for the next like when that 70% dump came that got publicized and all that but after that there were further like three times it happens where it, it dropped like 30 35 20 25% like there were small similar kind of dumps because other whales smaller whales would have realized that oh this kind of attack vector is possible because there is margin on that and i think after that binance has taken very good steps where they have limited the amount of tokens that you can borrow and things like that now that kind of attack like we have not seen that kind of attack in the last 3 uh, 4 months now it's fairly, it looks like fairly stable because i think that kind of leverage is not available at all in the market 
Yeah, because even though it's 5x, if you get a big enough whale, they can use that 5x leverage and, and compared to the total yeah. market cap, all of a sudden it's crazy. It's it's half the market cap. And so, yeah, 5x exactly. leverage works on Bitcoin, but not on, on, not on altcoins. So, yeah, it's good of Binance if they actually are limiting the leverage. Yeah, they're limiting. They're, they're, so leverage is still 5x, but there's a limit on the amount of borrow you can take. So it's not exactly. like you take your 500 BTC and borrow 2500 worth BTC worth of this, right? No. There will be at max you can borrow 50 BTC or 100 BTC worth of mm -hmm. uh, Matic. So that, that kind of volume Matic can easily absorb. So I think beyond, like from that point onwards, uh, you know, it has been very, very stable. And we also like, you know, uh, have been requesting all the exchanges that if they can bring down the margin and all that, but again, it's like one of the largest volume coins, altcoins. So, uh, you know, it's not in the business interest of the exchanges also. But I think, you know, uh, most of the exchanges have been very cooperative in terms of their, you know, they also analyzed, they had, uh, you know, they must have done their stuff to protect it. And now it's fairly safe. So what, what are your final words of advice here for, you know, a retail investor, someone who's, you know, doing research in this space, who's been in the space for a while? What are your parting words of wisdom for them? And uh, what's the sort of uh, message you want to leave them with for the future of Matic? What, you mean for, 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 for Matic, not for like, so for Matic, I would say that, you know, if you are, even if you are briefly interested in Matic, I would say that come to Matic community and see, you know, the, like what kind of communications and all that uh, stuff happened on, uh, you know, Matic community on Telegram and on Twitter, simply search for Matic on Twitter and see how many people and how big a community now Matic has become. And you would realize that it has telltale signs of something what, like, I don't want to direct compare and all that, but I am like a big, uh, you know, kind of, uh, uh, I, you know, appreciator of what Chainlink has been able to do in the space. Like they have created a huge passionate community. And if you go back six months to for Chainlink and compare that to where Matic is today, I think, you know, we have a similar kind of vibe in, in our overall community. It's a very passionate community, believes in the stuff, uh, knows what we are doing and all that. And I think that would, I would say that, you know, we may be where. So I, the, the advice I want to give is that you go to Matic community, and watch it for seven days on Twitter and then see if you want to be a part of it or not, if it suits your style. Well, there you guys have it. Matic is the next chain link, according to Sandeep. Uh, that's, a good, that's a good quote. We might have to put that in the thumbnail. Uh, but you guys check it out, Matic on Twitter. Sandeep, thank you so much for your time. We look forward to seeing how Matic progresses. And yeah, uh, best wishes. And we'll definitely be keeping tabs and updating our community as you grow. So thanks for your time. Yeah. Please, but but don't quote me on that. That you know, Matic is the next chain link. I'm just saying that <laughs> it's you know, going. It's going in the title. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Well, thank you so much again, and yeah, best of luck to you and the Matic team. Uh, thanks. 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 Thank you.